Fall is in full swing, and that means it's apple picking time. I'm Pat Cohn in the Savage Kitchen with Executive Chef Scott Savage and my favorite pastry chef, Jeremy Garcia, who is going to walk us through the orchard to create a flaky but very easy upside down apple tart. Jeremy? Yeah. Show us what to do. Okay. Um, this is a great dessert to do. I think it's probably like my absolute favorite dessert. And it's really, really easy. Um, the main ingredients are just butter, sugar, apples, and we've got a little bit of puff pastry. You can find that like in the frozen section of your local grocery market. They're going to have next to pie crust and whatnot. Um, so to start, we're just going to go ahead. we got, I got flame here. Okay. Bit. Not too hot. but So here we've got about a quarter pound of butter. So it's about one stick. And I just cube that up so that it melts nice. So we're talking what four, four ingredients here? Yeah, yeah. Then you got to figure the ice cream, maybe some caramel sauce yeah. to go at the end. But yeah, you know, that's another episode. Yeah, and most of these you probably are gonna have, you know, sitting around your house. You don't really need to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff to make this. Um, so once this butter is getting nice and melted, we're gonna go ahead and add the sugar. So here we got about three quarter cup of sugar. Would there be an advantage to using powdered sugar to this, or no? Not really. Um, not really. With the uh, juices from the apples and that butter, you, the this sugar just going to dissolve just as fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is my kind of recipe. It's oh, easy. Yeah. It has everyday ingredients. I think I might be able to do this. <laughs> oh yeah. Now, when you the pick, apples are good. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> now, when you pick out your pan. To be like, it's it's important what kind of pan you're using here. You need a pan that's got um, a nice metal handle on it. If you're trying to use one of the plastic handles, it's not going to work because we're going to throw this whole pan into the oven. Ah, uh, and so make sure you've got a nice yeah yeah. So you don't even need to pour this into a cake pan or anything else like that. Um, it's this is about an eight to nine inch uh, saute pan. Uh, you can go a little bit bigger, but you're going to want to add some more apples if you do because it's not going to fully cover the tart. That's a ten inch pan. Oh okay. Well there we go. <laughs> All right. And so like now that our sugar is starting to bubble there. We can start adding these apples slowly. And you add your favorite apple. Doesn't yes. necessarily have to be one over the other. This I is would, my favorite, the Fuji. The yeah, we use it. Fujis here. Fujis are great just because they got great flavor. They're good for all kinds of different uses. I would either recommend one of these or maybe like a Golden Delicious. Uh, Red Delicious are kind of mealy. They're going to probably fall apart on you. And Granny Smiths are a little too sour and tart. But yeah, I would recommend either a Fuji like or, or a Golden Delicious. Golden Delicious are great apple. A Fuji apples are just a little bit more tart now during the fall, aren't they? Yeah, I mean the, the most tart apple is going to be like Granny Smith, it's really, really sour, which almost makes it a little too strong for this dish, but the Fujis are great because they've got just enough of that acidity to kind of balance it out. Now first it's going to seem like you've got too many apples, but as they start to cook they're going to shrink a little bit and you're going to want to just cram all these apples in here. We've got <laughs> uh, six apples, I just peeled and cored them out and then cut them into quarters. You want nice big pieces. If they're too small, uh, they're going to fall apart as you cook them in the oven. With this puff pastry, Jeremy. Yeah. You want me to have at it? I'd go for it, bud. <laughs> I'm gonna do this the easy way. Uh, dough cutter or uh, pasta roller. Mm -hmm. Easiest way to do it. Instead of taking you know my my good knife and doughing that, cutting it on a piece of metal, I'm just gonna take my pastry roller and I'm actually gonna flute it. I'm gonna give it a little flavor. Uh, not the good best circle, is it? But eh, you know. <laughs> Hey, that works. Come on. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and so when you get the puff pastry, you're going to get about a pound sheet, which is about that size. We're only really going to be using about half of it. That trim on the outside, you can take that, ball it up, and then refrigerate it. And later on, you can roll it out and make another one if you'd like. Or you can save it for anything else. And this is a puff pastry as opposed to a pie crust. Yes. Yeah. A puff pastry, you've got layers of just flour and butter, and so it's going to become a lot more flaky, and it's going to rise up in the oven. So actually, we don't want it to rise up too much, so we're actually going to take this fork, and Chef, if you could just dock that dock a little bit. I He's going to play that. the drums over there on that puff pastry. Ooh, oh, it got away from me. <laughs> I was so excited. All right. So it's just starting to turn light around the edges here, like a light tan. We want to get it a little bit more caramelization. But you can rotate these apples so that they all get nice and even. The sugar really won't crystallize either on that, will it? No. And if, even if it does start to when you're melting that butter in there, once those apples start to release their juices, it's just going to melt right back in. Okay. And then as it cooks in the oven, the apple juice is that going to help that caramel from not cooking too fast and too far. Um, you do need to make sure you give it enough time to cook in the oven. I'd say cook it at about 375 to about 400 degrees. You want a nice high heat so that puff pastry rises up really well and sets. 
and it's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes. Well, you want to make sure, bad. yeah, you want to make sure it cooks all the way through. Check that puff pastry. Let it get a little bit darker than you would normally think, because you want it, every single layer of that puff pastry to cook through, so it's not doughy or anything like that. Is there a way to test, like toothpick, to test through the apples, see if they're just nice and easy, like you would potatoes or? No. Uh, yeah, you could. Um, I would check uh, around the sides. Watch that sauce as it's cooking in the oven. If it still seems nice, pretty thin, you can let it cook a little bit longer. Some of those juices are going to cook out and it's going to give you a nice, a little bit thicker syrup. Okay. Now, if you're having company, this is something that you can prepare ahead of time mm -hmm. and then stick in the oven on a very low temperature to heat up. Is that right? Uh, what I would do is actually you need a little bit of cooling time for it to set up a bit. So just go ahead and make it early. And then when you can pull it out and just let it sit on your counter and cool down, and then by the time your guests are ready to go, you can either just pop in the oven and kind of heat it up with a pick a little bit to serve it, and you'll be good to go. And right. so we're going to just make sure that all those little cut cord sides are facing up so that all the nice round sides are on the bottom from when we put that puff pastry on there. Normally you can go like a little bit darker with the caramelization if you want, but we're going to call this pretty good right here. We're almost making like a nice apple toffee basically is what this sauce that they're cooking in. And then we're good to go. And then we can just take this sheet of puff pastry here. Did I massacre? Yeah, but it's okay. We can stretch it out. <laughs> it like, oh, so that out. was perfect. <laughs> Look at that. It'll bake up pretty. There we go. <laughs> and then we just pop this in the oven. Get that. And then we'll come back in about 20 or so minutes and see how it looks. Great. So here's our finished tart. Uh, we can look at the puff pastry. It's all nice and golden brown, nice and flaky. It's going to be a little bit higher when you pull out of the oven, but we've actually let this one cool down a bit because you don't want to try to uh, invert it out of that pan before it gets too cool. Oh, that so makes sense. So all you really need to do is just take a pan, like a plate or a serving dish, any kind you want. Just put that on there, and then we can just flip this whole thing over. It should just come right out. Oh my out. gosh! And then if you got a little bit of sauce in there, you can just pour that right on top. It's nice and saucy. Look at that. And then you can oh, just cut slices good. of that. Serve it up, I guess you're going to love it. Another reason for not doing it hot is if your plate like that, that heart caramel will burn you very mm -hmm. bad. So be careful with that one too. Good tip. Jeremy, looks great. Yeah. Where's the ice cream? Oh, yeah. And when serving it, I mean, you can just <laughs> cut some nice thin slices. Uh, you can even cut it into nice big quarters to serve your guests. It's going to be a little bit runny with that sauce on there, but that's what makes it delicious. Serve a little bit of the creme anglaise, maybe a little bit of vanilla ice cream, or even just by itself. It's going to beat your grandma's mother apple pies, so. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> it's time for the true test, the taste test. Don't let me down now, Jeremy. All right, I'll try not to. Oh my gosh, that is really good. Not quite as good as my grandmother's, <laughs> but almost, you're almost there, almost Jeremy. There. <laughs> Cider House rules, not only in a bottle, but right here in the Savage Kitchen today. Log on to KOAA.com, click on the Savage Kitchen, and you too can be serving tart to tan this evening. We'll see you next week.